going to take the next 15 minutes to understand this paper from Jan Lecken himself. That is called Balu Twins, Self-Supervised Learning via Redundancy Reduction. It's from his lab, written by Jorge Javontar, Li Jing, Ishan Mishra, and Stefan Denai. The abstract reads that they're going to propose an objective function by measuring the cross-correlation matrix between the outputs of two identical networks, fed with distorted versions of a sample and making it as close to the identity matrix as possible. And the result is outperformance on previous methods. Now this paper is essentially about images, but I got interested because I thought maybe this objective could also be used for semantic search, which I'll explain later on. Now there's a very sweet diagram next to this explanation, and there is a beautiful one-to-one -one mapping between the phrases highlighted here and the blocks of this diagram. So the measuring part is here in loss and the measurement happens between the cross-correlation matrix which is this empirical cross-correlation matrix and the identity matrix which is this one. And what is happening here is basically if you take let's say image of a cat and that image will be distorted in two ways. Number one, maybe it will be scaled up. And number two, maybe it will be shifted to the right. And I'm saying maybe because there is a set of transformations that they have used on their images. And I just give example of two of them. Then both these distorted images or transformed images of the cat will be passed to the same network. Same because you can see that they're both called F theta here and F theta here. And then as a result, they learn a representation. Now here's a little bit of a mistake here. Normally it should have been ZB here because the ZB representation is coming from F theta via YB and ZA should have been here coming from F theta and YA. Now once you have this representation of these two distorted images, you will learn an empirical cross correlation matrix which should be equivalent to an identity matrix. Now how this empirical cross correlation matrix is learned, I'll explain it later on. But this is a general idea. They want to propose an objective function. And as a result of that, you can learn the representation of any image via this objective function in an embedded vector. Now, the idea behind this objective function came from a neuroscientist in 60s called H. Barlow, who hypothesized that the goal of the sensory processing is to record highly redundant sensory inputs into a factorial code, or basically, take your observed data and map it into statistically independent components. And uh, this loss function in this image, you saw this LBT is written mathematically as equation one. And I'll explain this equation one. And the individual term in this equation, such as CII and CIJ is written in equation two. And I will also explain that. So basically that's it. You have a very simple architecture. F theta could be any kind of neural network. In this case, they have used ResNet 50. The trick or the interesting part is only writing this uh, cost function, which they have written in mathematical form here. Now, what is it actually? So here I have uh, copied the image. I have written these two equations and I'm going to explain them that how does it really work? So for example, if you have an image here of let's say a triangle, then you will run two distortions and one distortion could be as I gave the example there could be scaled version of this and another distortion could be simply shifted to the right and then it will pass through this network and then it will get embedded into a vector let's say in this case we have four scalars representing that embedding now because this two embedding is coming from the same image so what is expected is that they should essentially be the same embedding but the problem is that these two images which are actually the core representations of these two embedding are not the same because they have essentially been transformed in some way so what they propose is that let's say that instead of this one image you had multiple images of different kind maybe this is a triangle maybe this is a circle maybe this is a square and as a result of this batch processing you are going to end up learning a batch representation so I drove three images there I'm going to draw a matrix with three rows and four columns because as I said that each scalar of the embedding is one of the representations 
So now this is what you have. Now what they're saying essentially through this cost function is that this vector should be identical or correlated, not identical, correlated to this vector. This vector should be correlated to this vector. And this vector should be correlated to this vector. But this vector should be uncorrelated to this vector and this and, and that vector should be uncorrelated to this vector. And the reasoning behind that is that because of trying to learn independent components, they want to say that if there is a statistical pattern here or here or here, then in each one of these two embeddings, they should increase and decrease in the same way in this batch and in this batch. But because an entirely different set of representation has been learned in this scalar, so there should be no connection between this and this. So that's the way that, so that's why they say that where B indexes batch samples, which means one, two, three, similarly one, two, three, for one, two, three. And I and J index the vector dimension, which means uh, I is uh, this, 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 and J is this, this, this. And this is the overall objective function. And here, if you look at this, this clearly resembles the correlation matrix. And uh, normally you don't see the subtraction factor here because uh, they have uh, normalized along the dimension of the batch. So this is the overall architecture of uh, the Barlow's uh, cost function. And why I got inspired to use this for semantic search because imagine that uh, what is transformation like image in text? Maybe somebody typed a query, for example, pasta. And there were five kinds of pastas, pasta with broccoli flavor and pasta with uh, veggie. So pasta, broccoli, I'm taking a little bit of time to write this, but uh, pasta, broccoli, and pasta, veggie. 